Okay, art students, we are on day two boot camp. We're gonna be using watercolors today. The materials you need are your um, day two paper, couple paint brushes. I have a round brush and a flat brush. The round brush has a nice point. This one's flat. If you don't have two brushes, it's not a big deal. Um, just use one, but I have two out. I have my watercolor set. I have a cup of water. Remember, water stays really far away from any of your devices. We don't want anything getting wet that shouldn't. Um, tape, so I have two rolls of tape here. One's blue, one is just regular masking tape. If you have it, um, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, um, but it's a fun technique that I'm gonna show you. I also have here an oil pastel, a, a little candle, and a crayon. I'm gonna experiment with all three. You guys don't need all three, just if you have one. I'm, I'm assuming most of you will have a, a crayon in your house. Um, pick a light color, white, yellow, light blue, something that's not too dark. Those That usually comes out best. And then lastly, you need a paper towel here. So just a couple pieces of paper towel. Okay, let's get started with the watercolors. We're gonna start in the um, top box that says wet on dry. So make sure you do that because um, we need to put the uh, paint down and let it totally dry before we're gonna dry, uh, we're gonna paint on top of it. And then we're gonna move to the taping technique. So for watercolors, unlike the acrylic paint, you're gonna wanna really use water in the paint. I'm gonna start with my blue here. You can see my watercolors have been used quite a bit. I just grabbed these from school. Um, so I'm adding water to the paint. It's really pretty dry. These are dry cakes or semi-moist cakes, which means they might be a little sticky. Um, I like to leave them open after I'm done painting so that they um, so that they totally dry between uses. And I'll mention that again at the end here. So I'm just gonna paint this box blue and let it dry, okay? You'll see with the watercolor, it's very transparent. It's different than acrylic paint, which offers a lot of coverage. Watercolor should be nice and watery and also transparent. You should see through the paint. Um, so Sharpie and watercolor is a nice combination if you want your lines to show, if you do a drawing in Sharpie and you want it to show, um, using watercolor with it works really nicely. Okay, we're just gonna let that dry. Next is the taping technique. Take a couple pieces of tape, put it in that box, and we're just gonna um, paint over it and see what it looks like. We'll peel it off after it's dry. Maybe do one more here. Okay, that's that. Okay, good enough, I got a big A. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different color. I've got a little purple here. Remember, add your water, make it nice and watery. Don't try to dig out the paint. You want it, it's just the water that's mixing with the paint that kind of sits on the surface. That is what you wanna use for your, um, for painting. Okay, I'm just gonna do one color for the sake of time. You guys, of course, can add different colors if you would like. I'm trying to make this video not too long. Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry and we'll peel that off at the end. Wet on wet, this is my favorite technique. This technique looks great with backgrounds. If you wanna do kind of a cool um, abstract background and then um, you know paint on top of it after it's dry, that works really nice. So the wet on wet technique, actually you start just with water. So I'm gonna put some water down. My water has a little purple in it, but that's okay. You don't have a lot of control with this technique. Wet your paper and then take your paint and you just kinda, you know, add paint to the wet area. Now, um, you have to be okay with kind of letting it run, not having a ton of control with this technique. I have a lot of water down, I can see, so I'm not gonna add too much, any more water. I'm just gonna add some of the paint. But this is a really fun technique. It looks kind of like tie-dye. Okay, now it's gonna be super drippy. So you guys don't pick it up. 
I mean, some sometimes I see people sort of lift it to get this drippy technique. Um, I really like when I can see the blue and the purple, like the two different colors, um, you know, when they're not all mixed together and turn into one, turn, when it turns into one color, if it mixes too much, I think it looks really good when you can sort of see the separation there. I'm just gonna add a little more water. You can see it sort of will bleed um, where you add the water. I'm just letting that dry. I feel like there's a little bit of a big puddle here. So I'm gonna show you what you could do in the blotting section. And you can also um, blot on the wet on wet section too if you want. Okay, blotting. Blotting is a technique, I'm gonna use a different color, where you um, take a paper towel and you pull up some of the paint. So I use this technique all the time. You see how that's bleeding there? Teaching moment. When, when you have wet paint next to wet paint, it will bleed together. Okay, so let's say you're painting and you accidentally put too much paint onto your paper and it got really dark and you don't like the way it looks. This is when you can go in with a paper towel um, and pull up some of that paint. So take a paper towel and the paper towel, the texture of the paper towel can look really cool too. It could be a kind of a cool, um, you know, texture that you want to add to your painting. And you just pull it up. This is also something I do when I make mistake. When I make a mistake, let's say I was like, oh, I didn't want that little spot there with the paint. You can add water and pull it up. I feel like watercolors are pretty forgiving in that way. So it's a way to kind of erase, but you gotta do it fast, like when it's still wet. See, I pulled up that whole area. So always, you know, have a paper towel next to you because if you make a mistake, you can use the blotting technique to pull up the paint really quickly. Um, you can also use it if you have too much water. So in this area, I kind of feel like I had too much water. I pulled it up, that little puddle is gone, and now um, I can see the paint a little nicer and it's not dripping. Okay, now last, I have never used a candle before, so I just brought this out to see if it works. It's waxy, so it should work. We're on the oil resist here. Um, and then I have an oil pastel and a crayon. I'm gonna just try all three. So I'm just gonna do a little drawing here with my crayon. Doesn't really matter too much what you do. Um, but I just wanna see how it comes out when I paint on top of it. The water should not mix with um, the oil of your oil pastel or whatever you're using to draw with. So it creates this resist. So I'm doing the same drawing with three different, um, three different oily materials here. So let's try out, ooh, my candle already broke. I just wanna see how it looks. Um, push hard. If you push too softly, then you won't get enough of that oil on the paper and it might not work as well. I'm just gonna add some little decorative dots. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my blue. I might do like a wet on wet technique on this just to see how it comes out. So you should be able to see your drawing show through the paint. And there it is. Okay, very cool. So if it's pretty watery, your paint, that's actually a good thing because the water, it's the water and the paint that, um, excuse me, it's the water and the oil that aren't gonna mix. Now let's see how the candle came out. Oh, the candle worked just fine. Okay, so now you see my three stars here. Um, that's all we're going to do for day two, are just these techniques. So, and if you want to use the blotting technique to pull up some of the paint that's on the um, oily surface, you can do that. Um, so yeah, you guys get started.